I was at a sort of social event uh, a couple of months ago, and I, I slipped into a conversation with a friend of mine who was talking to another man, an older man. I didn't know him. I didn't catch his name. But he, he was, seemed like a successful person, right? He spoke with a commanding voice, held himself well, had terrific posture. I introduced myself. I'm Eric Rostin. I write about climate and energy at Bloomberg Green. He asked me about renewable energy, and I say, you know, it's funny because I'm working on a big project about that now, and in a nutshell, we need a million miracles to beat back climate change. And just in the last five years or so, we've gotten like a thousand of them. Um, and one of the uh, critical factors of that is that worldwide, increasingly, renewable power is cheaper than coal. And I finished saying that, and he said, yeah, but nobody's ever going to pay more for renewable power. So. Uh, he's missing the big story, right? At Bloomberg Green, every day we write articles, and if you've ever seen one, you know an article is a thing about a company or a policy or a discovery or a conflict. Um, and so what happens is we take these and we put all of them up on our mom's refrigerator, and they become this kind of mosaic. And this mosaic tells something different than a story. It's a storyline. Um, and storylines are different than stories because they hardly ever change, right? There's some news events where you could skip a year of news and come back and understand, okay, same storyline. Sometimes it's five years. This storyline we're talking about today is changing very dramatically, very quickly, and has been for a couple of years. Um, so what I've done is for for people just coming back from a year off of climate news, maybe, or uh, people who are just new to the space, here are five quick things that I think are important to understand this fat, rapidly changing storyline. This is a, a spread from the latest issue of Green Magazine. Uh, this two-page chart you see here is actually it's the same data that John Moore showed you this morning. There was $1.1 trillion in energy transition investment. In 2022, it's a doubling of what we had in 2015 uh, and a 31% increase uh, over 2021 from last year. Now, there are very powerful vectors uh, behind this. There are laws behind this. There are big companies driving this. Um, but I want to be clear that like, we can't, you, you can't take it for granted. Um, although, so I've, I've actually forgot to, Point one, uh, point one is that prices change behavior and that the price of uh, wind and solar has changed dramatically. That's fundamentally what's going on here. Uh, but as a caveat, I do want to uh, point out something that uh, a venture capitalist, uh, Ryan Pachesaran, said, uh, from, and Planner Perkins, he, uh, he had a book come out last year with John Doerr. He said, if I introduce you to the newest thing, to move you, to power you, to feed you, I am taking money away from someone else uh, and saying, pick me instead. So that's what's driving this, and that's why you can't really take it for granted. Um, so the Inflation Reduction Act came along last year. The European Green Deal uh, came along a year before that. Uh, and this is what the world of climate finance looked like in, 19, in 2019 and 2020 uh, on average. This is data put together by a group called uh, the Climate Policy Initiative. Um, and it's a measure not of energy transition. This is a pool of $652 billion. This is money that is spent toward uh, climate mitigation or, uh, or a little bit on adaptation. And so you can see some trends here. You look at the top left quad quadrant uh, of this chart, that's uh, East Asia and basically China, which makes up about half of all spending. Uh, you can see that public and private spending are about at parity, which, you know, ideally, I think private sector, once it gets moving, will see that ratio change. And on the end, you see where it's going. And so obviously the, uh, the bulk of this money is going to new energy systems and then transport. Uh, my favorite line is this little, little tiny line coming up from the middle. Uh, in, in feeding into public spending. That's basically US and Canadian uh, government spending. And while it looks like it should be bigger, the interesting thing about government spending is it's, it's actually usually uh, tax credits uh, and uh, 
other regulatory tools like that. That's why uh, the government lines are a little bit smaller than they might otherwise be. Um, here's just another look at the global picture. Uh, Americans who are engaged in this space are waking up to see that not only are we not in a leadership position, uh, this is a space that until recently has belonged almost entirely to China. Half of all investment uh, in 2022 came from China. So the second th uh, of my five points here is the ultimate motivator for the energy transition, which is climate change, is being supplanted uh, on a day-to-day -day level by more immediate and even better motivators. And venture capital is a really good example of this, because uh, you see just this uh, year over year, well, not quite, and this year is going to be rough, um, increase uh, in venture capital. And that is, come, that is just like an archipelago of uh, investors and companies um, who are just finding their little nooks and crannies. Uh, again, when I said on the first slide, remember there are, there's very powerful vectors here that will continue. But there's also a lot of noise, right? And this is going to be a year of noise. That venture capital investment bar is going to be like half that uh, tall this year. Already in the first quarter, according to a note that Bloomberg NEF put out on Monday, uh, US uh, venture capital investment in uh, climate stuff is down 54% over uh, the rolling uh, four quarter average. On the right, uh, I kept this on. Uh, I think it's interesting to look at which sectors are earning, uh, are, are getting the financing, um, and comparing it to uh, where greenhouse gases are coming from. Like, it doesn't need to be a one-to-one -one thing, uh, but I still think it's an interesting rule of thumb, an interesting mental check to see how out of whack investment is uh, from uh, greenhouse gases. So the third thing, is uh, the best articulation of this I've seen recently was uh, Peter Reinhardt is a uh, uh, serial entrepreneur. He runs uh, Charm Industrial now, which is taking biomass and sort of turning it into goop and, and hiding it forever. He said that we need to rebuild almost all the infrastructure around us to, uh, to eliminate fossil fuels uh, emissions and return the atmosphere to its pre-industrial levels. So like this is a whole planet, right? Uh, uh, whole species wide affair. We have to go into every nook and cranny uh, to find the emissions and wrestle them out. What I like about this chart, which shows the number of deals last year, venture capital deals in startups, it shows you like finally before our eyes, like. People are getting to the nooks and crannies. Like people are getting up in the morning and trying to build batteries out of rusting iron and trying to use AI to, you know, kill weeds in agricultural fields. Uh, there is just a, a humongous uh, spread of activities in most places that we need them. There is. Um, I, I tried to translate this joke into like a modern idiom, but I couldn't really do it. So there was this thing called the Soviet Union, uh, and uh, there was a joke about how uh, you know an American economist goes to a conference in Vienna and meets a Soviet counterpart and says, "Dmitri, how's it going? In one word, tell me how the Soviet economy is going." Dmitri says, "Good," uh, and he says, "Good, that's great." In two words, tell me in two words how the Soviet economy is going, and he says, "Not good." Uh, so that's another, that's like point four, is like there is deserved and important euphoria about the rate of change in the energy transition, uh, but it's also not enough. Like right here in the black, that's funding from the last uh, uh, 18 years or so. Those are the, like the thousand miracles I, I mentioned before. However, we also need like much more than that. This is Bloomberg NEF data projecting the amount of uh, energy transition finance we need by mid-century. Um, I'm going to skip this one, uh, I, but a big shout out for energy nerds for the IEA Energy Tr uh, Technology Perspectives report in January. It's just pure joy. Uh, and the last thing is um, I talked about storylines at the beginning. 
And I want to draw your attention to another very important usage of the word storylines. Uh, climate scientists who have honed their conversational e English skills uh, sometimes talk about the scenarios they use to test their models as storylines. And so while at Bloomberg Green we get up every day and we write our stories and perpetuate the storyline as we're finding it in the world, and you all get up every day and participate in your storylines, um, this is the IPCC um, output from their, their August uh, 2021 report showing representative scenarios, representative, representative storylines of things that might happen. Um, and it's easy to look at this and say, oh yeah, okay, IPCC model, and divorce that from our own experience. But every one of our jobs, every one of our lives, our consumer decisions, our behavior decisions, our voting decisions, every one of those is in one of the lines, whatever the actual line is going to be, like this is a very real chart. And, it's, uh, uh, and, and I encourage everyone to think about these global scientific um, uh, conclusions and uh, you know, it's not just science, it's not just data. We are a part of that storyline. We have the experience, we have the tools we need. Uh, all we have to do is the work, and it's a lot of work. Thank you very much.